Oh, and there's three champs. I didn't even see. Oh, there's three champs. I didn't even see. Someone's got their TV on. Yeah, yeah they do. Oh, I do. I do. I mean, we can hear that too. So we'll my age is watching. We can hear the news. Baked potato. Yeah. Smelling it to watch the oven. We've got to bake some baked potatoes in the oven. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm just smelling it. I'm wondering how they're doing. Yeah, probably all you can always just shut up the, the oven. Oh, Here we there go. We go. Hey, they didn't mute us yet. Oh.
Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Cantor Katzman, it is such a pleasure and an honor that we get to share the bima with you for you. The honor is totally mine. Yeah. We're, uh, we're thinking about uh, Cantor Ben David, who's just feeling a little uh, under the weather. A little icky. Because we are all literally under so much weather <laughs> this week. <laughs> this week, or actually a couple weeks ago, I was gifted a pocket watch. And this pocket watch was my great, great grandfather's pocket watch. It was very cool to receive. And I've really been thinking about the amount of time that this watch has seen, especially in a week like this, where one of the pieces of news this week was that at the National Ignition Facility. They shot 192 lasers at some atoms, and it created fusion, <laughs> nuclear fusion, more energy than they put into it. And we're like, okay. They put in about two megajoules of energy. You got three megajoules out, and you're like, okay. It's not really gonna like power much. It lasted for about a second. You're like, okay. But also this week, 75 years ago this week, the transistor was, was shown off at Bell Labs in New York. You're like, 75 years ago? Thinking about the transistor being 75 years old, thinking about this little lasers shot into some atoms, making a little bit of energy. Think what that could happen in 75 <laughs> years. And that pocket watch that has seen about 75 to 100 years of life. Now that same watch can hold like three to four million transistors, three, three to four billion transistors are in this watch. The amount that time moves forward is so quick sometimes, especially as we're sitting here with so many of our junior kindergarten and kindergarten friends whose parents are like, yes, I brought you home from the hospital yesterday. Time flies. And that is why Shabbat is so important. So it's time that we make time slow down so that we can embrace those around us, celebrate the time that we have together, and really appreciate the world. To help us slow down time for Shabbat, uh, to light our candles, we're going to invite up the Snyder family Fred and Jennifer and Ashley and Rachel uh, to come light the Shabbat candles. And as they're coming up, I'm also going to invite up David Goodman, 
uh, to come join us in the center. Uh, he is representing some of the leadership of It's Our Turn IOT, uh, who are hosting a dinner right afterwards. So uh, we're gonna turn to page 120 for our candle blessing first. Amen. Thank you, Snyders. And Cantor, David has requested that you sing with volume and gusto. But we're going to put the mic right up to him, too. Good idea. <laughs> we're going to rise in body or in spirit on page 123. If you're joining us online on page 5. Ruhatani, <laughs> Amen. Thank you, David. We're excited to celebrate with It's Our Turn After. We may be seated unless we are in kindergarten or junior kindergarten. I want to invite all of our JKK friends to come join us on the Bema here. You're going to stand right up on these steps. Hello, hello, hello. Why don't we go right here, friends? We'll go right here, right in front. Yes, perfect. Now, we did a little bait and switch because you practiced this past Sunday with Cantor Ben David, but now you have this incredible Cantor Katzman here with you today. And our junior kindergarten and kindergarten friends are going to lead us first in the words of Ma Yafe Hayom, literally, how good, how awesome is this day? Shabbat 
Spectacular. We are so proud of you. Look at all these people behind me who are just like, these friends are the best. These friends of ours are so special and we're so happy that they get to come and join us in religious school every Sunday morning. And I am so excited to see you again on Sunday morning. But your treat for all this, with the, the cookie and cake, it's gonna be right afterwards, all right? Soon, right after we're done here, we're gonna go, we're gonna have cake, because you all earned it, and you earned it for all of them. So they say thank you. Yeah. All right. You all. bringing so much joy and love into our space. We bring even more of that Shabbat spirit in with the words of Lecha Dodi on page 138. We do verses one, two, five, and nine. On the ninth verse, we rise and we face the entrance as if we are welcoming in the Sabbath bride into our space. Again, page 138. And we do one, two, five, and nine unless the cantor messes up. Yeah. <laughs> Either way. Yeah. La 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 lecha do di. La 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 lecrat kala. La 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 pene shabbat. Pene shabbat lecha. Shamor vizachor vidibur echad hishmianu el ham yuchad Adonai echad ushimo echad l'shemu tiferet velihit Thank 
It's okay. We run, we're staying standing on page 146, the call to worship. Somehow I think that was the cantor's fault, but I could be wrong. Page 151, middle of 151. Let's pray together in the English. Wisdom and wonder, passion, passion and, and instruction, instruction, story and symbol, all, all these things your Torah, Torah gives, gives to us. us. And the, the more, more we, we devote, devote ourselves to it, the more it grows and gives. What, what could, could be a truer token of your abiding love than this, this holiest of your works, works and the and living, living language that, that gives it form. Baruch atah Adonai, Ohev Amo Yisrael. Shema Yisrael Adonai Shoch Becha Uvkumecha 
וקשרתם לאות על ידיך, והיו לטוטפות בין עיניך. וכתבתם על מזוזות ביתך ובשעריך, למען תזכרו ועשיתם את כל מצוותי, והייתם קדושים לאלוהיכם. אני אדוני אלוהיכם, אשר הוצאתי אתכם מארץ מצרים להיות לכם לאלוהים. אני אדוני אלוהיכם. Oh, we're turning yeah, to page 158. Yes, let's do that yeah. for Micha Mocha. Uh, our words of Micha Mocha. If you're joining us from home uh, on page 40, uh, can be found 158 for those in person. Lai, 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 la, lai, la, 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 la. too, Ethan and Hannah, and thank you. And I'll say that tonight is such a special night. Um, it's wonderful to be able to have Cantor Katzman, our Cantor Emerita, with us this evening. And I know that it's such a treat for all of us to be able to hear her and to be with her. So we are so grateful. And I want to share with you um, a little story as we are about to approach Hanukkah. Is anybody excited for Hanukkah? Yes, beautiful. And I know that you're excited only to be able to light the menorah, right? And to bring in light and maybe to sing the blessings that go along with it. And I don't know if you've ever noticed when you light the blessings for, for the Hanukkah or for the menorah, that what we start off with singing is, is pretty familiar. We hear the beginning of it even on Shabbat, where we sing about the way in which we're commanded to light the lights. And when it's Shabbat, we light the lights of Shabbat. But on Hanukkah, what do we light the lights of? Of Hanukkah. And so it's so special that we get to light these lights. Does anybody know why we light the lights? The light that would not stop all those years ago. That's why we light the light. And we even sing about it and we say, Sha'asa nisim lavotenu, just as God did miracles for our ancestors um, hahem in those days, then we say, Bazman hazeh, and also in these days too. So when I'm telling you this story, that starts off a little bit shaky, but ends up really, really special. I want you to think about, where's the Hanukkah miracle in this story? What does it mean that there are miracles that happen not only for our ancestors long, long, long time ago, but also for us in these days? 
So has anybody ever heard of the city Billings, Montana? Billings, Montana. Has anybody ever been to Montana? If you were going to describe Montana, you would probably say that it's very open, right? It's a very open space area. What stands out to you um, in that space of Montana? Anybody? Big skies, right? It's beautiful there. And what happened in this town, Billings, Montana, is that they were in a place where, for a long time, all the neighbors got to know each other, and they were so different from each other. There were some neighbors who were Native American. There were some neighbors who were African American. There were some neighbors who were Jewish. There were some neighbors that were white and Christian. There were all kinds of neighbors who lived together, and they really liked each other. Does anybody here like their neighbors? <laughs> okay, you're not the one that you don't like, but you have ones that you like also. So thinking about that way that we're neighbors, well, something happened in the 1990s, which I can't believe that I'm saying this, but that was 30 years ago. <laughs> so there were these people who came into this town, and they were not very nice at all. In fact, they were very, very mean. They actually did things where they were anti-Native American, anti-African American, anti-Jewish people, and they wanted to make sure that the town knew just how they felt. So what did they do, these people who were not so nice who came into the town? Well, first what they did is they had graffiti that they did all over this one Native American's house. Do you know how the town responded? There were 30 people who showed up the next day and painted the house back so that it looked brand new. And then they wanted to make sure that people who were African American who were going to church would be very uncomfortable. So there were some of them that actually stood in the church itself and crossed their arms and said not nice things. Do you know what the town people did? They went to the church that next week, and there were hundreds and hundreds of people who wanted to be able to say, that's not how we feel, and they all stood together. Well, it was getting to be around the time of Hanukkah. It was in December, and so there was one house, lots of houses, but one house in particular where this little boy Isaac lived, and they decorated the house all beautiful with Hanukkah lights, Hanukkah menorahs, and they loved their decorations. But you can imagine that those people who were not so nice who moved into that town, how they felt about it. And one day they threw a rock in the window. Could you imagine? And so those parents of Isaac were not very happy at all, and they told the newspaper about it. And do you know what the newspaper editor did? They ran on the very front page. They shared what happened in that poem to say, in there, this was not okay. And so in that way, that, that family felt supported, and they knew that there were people who cared, but they couldn't believe what happened next. What happened next was that the next day in the newspaper, they printed this color menorah that was as big as a newspaper page that anybody could cut out and put into their window. And the editor of the newspaper encouraged people saying, if we want to be able to be good neighbors, maybe we want to show the Jewish people that were with them during this Hanukkah season, and maybe you could put a menorah like that in your window. And so all of a sudden, there were just a few at first, and then maybe 10 or 20, bless you, and then 30 and 40. And do you know what happened? Still, those mean people were doing not nice things, saying mean things to people in the town. So do you know what they did next? They had a vigil at night where hundreds of people showed up. And then the next day, they had a daytime vigil and do you see all these different kinds of people who are holding a menorah? Yeah? Do you see the sheriff in the town was holding a menorah? A Native American chief was holding a menorah? 
a priest was holding a menorah, then all of them said together that they wanted to make sure that the Jewish people in that town would feel safe. Well, do you know that the next night when Hanukkah began, there were 10,000 people in this little town of Billings, Montana, who all said that we want to make sure that everyone feels safe here. Everyone. And so what they did, that you'll see that it's crazy what they put up on this commercial billboard just outside of an exercise studio. They said, not in our town. No hate, no violence. Peace on earth. And in that way then, not only the Jewish people felt supported, everyone in that town felt supported. And in that way then, I want to ask you, did you hear a Hanukkah miracle in that story? Was there a place where you heard a Hanukkah miracle? I'm going to ask Cookie Mark. To, oh, I'm going to ask you first. Um, with your, with your, your very special parent next to you who has I latka move it, move it on their sweatshirt. So can I pass this microphone to you and can you share where you found a Hanukkah miracle in the story? I found a Hanukkah miracle is that they started to celebrate it in the day and walk all down the streets with menorahs. Yeah. So usually we think about lighting a menorah at night. And so, but they said during the day we can light a menorah too, and we can take it to be able to show the miracle of people standing together in what I would say is solidarity or in friendship, in neighborliness. Did you want to share another miracle that you heard in the story? Um, there was, they weren't being nice to that house. Yeah, that actually they were being nice to that house. First the house where the Native Americans were living, um, and they were able to paint it again. And then they were nice to be able to say that all houses should be ways of showing that they want everyone to feel safe. And in that way, that was a way of being able to be nice to their houses, too. They said mean things. Yeah, so that when those people said mean things, other people countered it and said nice things back. All right, I'm going to take three, let's see, one, two, three, four, five more comments, and then... All the people came together and fought for their rights. Yeah. Did you hear that? All the people came together and fought for their rights. Can you pass this microphone back? They all came together and were, they were held, holding up the menorahs. Yeah, they all came together and held up their menorahs together. Did you have another one that you wanted to share? Another Hanukkah miracle? By the way, do we see how many we've had so far? I think we've had five. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have... When they were lighting the menorah. Yeah, a new way to light the menorah. Beautiful. All right. And so now these last two over here. Um, I found it really special in a Hanukkah miracle that the small town... Um, with many, you know, different people from different cultures living it, um, they decided that they, as a group of people, were going to not accept um, the hate that people were giving, and they, and they worked together to um, scrub off the graffiti and um, say that they wanted peace, and I think that's really important for people to say, especially nowadays. Beautiful. I find it a miracle that even though many, many people were being mean, they figured a way to make more and more people be nice and, and scrub off the graffiti and help the people win against hate and violence. Beautiful. Thank you so much. And I'll say that I think that in these days, when sometimes we see that there's a lot of... Uh, by the way... The, I'll say after the service, let's talk about it. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. So I'll say that in these days, when we sometimes 
hear about hate and hear about violence, I think another miracle is to know that we have this model for how we can stand together and continue to celebrate light, no matter if sometimes there are dark times. Thank you so much for all of you to point out those ways in which we see Hanukkah miracles in that story, and even all the way up until today. Thank you. We continue now with our Amidah, page 166. Please rise. I think we'll start on page 164, page 46. Oops, what am I doing? You know what? I'm having such a good time. I wanted to go back to the beginning of the service, but let's not do that. Minky, what tune are we going to do here? Oh, that's it. We continue now in silent prayer, and when you're finished with your own personal prayer, we invite you to be seated.
Ose shalom bim rumav, kuya se shalom aleinu. Ose shalom bim rumav, kuya se shalom aleinu. Ose shalom bim rumav, kuya se. Shalom Aleinu, Yase Shalom, Yase Shalom, Shalom Aleinu, Ve'al Kol Yisrael, Yase Shalom, Yase Shalom, Shalom Aleinu, Ve'al Kol Yisrael, Yase Shalom, Yase Shalom. Shalom Aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael Yase Shalom, Yase Shalom Shalom Aleinu ve'al kol We find there the words for Mishaberach. And I'll say that in some ways, the Mishaberach, we pray that those whom we know and whom we love who are in need of healing, we pray that they will be healed. But sometimes we wonder, what does it mean to be healed? So sometimes it means that there is a cure and we're going to get all better again. And sometimes it means that we have a chronic illness, something that we'll always struggle with a little bit. So we just pray to have some comfort. And sometimes we know that we're not going to get better, and so we pray for comfort, not only for those people who are ill, but we pray for comfort for the people who are surrounding them, making them feel good and loved, even as they are ill. And so if you're thinking of someone who's in need of that kind of healing, I invite you to say their name. I'll start over here. Think of our own cantor, Ben David, who is at home with a cold, and we're so glad that he's able to rest with her family as we sing these words together. Spirit, 
and let us sing Amen. And also, what a special evening it is tonight where we have IOT, it's our turn. Um, who are empty nesters and never nesters who are going to have a beautiful oneg after this service and they're going to have it in Lakeshore Lobby. But they're sharing this beautiful service with our JK and K, our junior kindergarten and kindergartners. We are so grateful to be able to share this beautiful, diverse and also diverse in many ways, including generationally right here and I want to say a very special thank you to two of our extraordinary teachers who are here, Nico and Greta. It's wonderful to see you both. Will you just kind of give a little wave so we can say thank you? Um, oh, you got you got us you got us uh, like a like a kavod clap, like a like a respect the space. Like, are we okay to clap here? I think we can clap for these amazing teachers. <laughs> And it's wonderful that we're going to see the same kind of diversity um, in, in our ages and uh, on Sunday uh, when we welcome in Hanukkah as a community um, that evening at 4.30. Um, but we'll have a full day even before we get there. So, um, Rabbi Gelman, you want to share with us about Hanukkah box? Yeah, one of our first things on Sunday morning uh, is our annual Sholem Justice Hanukkah Box Project, uh, where we deliver dozens and dozens and dozens of large boxes to, uh, to those who are in need, those who are hungry, uh, who could use a special Hanukkah meal uh, throughout the Chicagoland area. Uh, so we are still looking for a few drivers uh, you bring about uh, two or three boxes, uh, and you go and deliver them to those excited uh, recipients. Um, and it's it's really such a beautiful uh, honor of tzedakah that you get to do that morning, and you can do it with your family. I'll say, please, do it with another person. Um, so if you are... Um, contemplating, if you say, oh, you know what, I think I could get here around 10 or 10.30 that morning to be able to deliver some Hanukkah boxes, um, go with, with a friend, a strong friend, um, and uh, some of these boxes can be very heavy. Um, most of these boxes are very heavy, um, and sometimes you'll bring it directly to the person who is receiving it, and sometimes you'll leave it at a front desk in every which way we do it with such respect and love. Yeah. So great. And, uh, and at 10.45 that morning, um, we'll have a guest scholar online um, who's going to be teaching a class on demystifying teen language on gender. And this is with Paige Goldmarch, who is extraordinary. Um, and I would say that this will help everyone um, be able to give everyone the kind of respect um, through the way in which we talk um, about uh, about about gender, um, and so if we could, I'd love to see you there at 1045. And then at four o'clock on Sunday, uh, yeah, at four o'clock, uh, we're gonna join right in here with our Tat Hanukkah celebration. Uh, so any families with Tots, come join us. We'll sing, we'll dance up here. Uh, and then right after that, we invite the whole congregation. You can come to Tat Shabbat too, if you'd like. Um, we'll invite the whole congregation uh, to join us at 4.30 for a joyous, fun-filled uh, early evening. Uh, we're going to have sufganiyot. We're going to have donuts. We're going to have games, arts and crafts. Uh, we're going to write letters uh, to those who... Uh, maybe are homebound or can't uh, visit their families, uh, and we're just going to schmooze and eat and celebrate Hanukkah together, light the candles, of course, too. So and, join us at 4.30. And this is my, this is my uh, kind of vintage. Um, Monday, December 19th, there's a vaudeville. There is a late 19th and early 20th centuries. Oh, that's me. Um, <laughs> 
And um, anyone who, who can keep the audience's interest has got to be brilliant. And so, so who is this person? It, it's a very interesting person. And it's going to be really good. So that is Monday at 7. Mixed presents. And then every other night of Hanukkah at 7 p.m. Um, on Zoom, the link is on the Temple Sholem website, uh, we are joining together to light the Hanukkah candles together as, as one large community, just for about 15, 20 minutes, enough to, to gather together as friends and as a, a Temple Sholem community. And each night will be led by a different community group uh, every night of the week. And if you were wondering, where are all the 20s and 30s tonight? Well, they actually have an event of their own. Oh, we have one, one 20s and 30s. Oh, two. You're here. Thing. We are so grateful that you're here with us this evening. Others are, are with a um, getting a four-course um, meal um, provided by Masa Madre. Um, and so they are celebrating this Shabbat after dark. But for the two of you... <laughs> Let me share with you another thing that you can do. Um, oh, my gosh. For the, the four of you. Five. <laughs> sorry. Five of you over We're here. Um, on Tuesday, December 20th at 630 in person, there's going to be a Macomb Book Club. So it's going to be a new book club that is launching that evening at Wild Bar and Restaurant on Broadway. Um, and uh, Shul Temple Sholem is going to provide a few appetizers to munch on. And you're going to discuss, what are you going to read? And so that you can do at 6.30 on uh, Tuesday, December 20th. Um, and, uh, and so I think with that, I just want to say thank you to our incredible IOT. Um, David, who are your co-conspirators in, um, in organizing? Oh, Jackie Lustig. Where's Jackie? Um, <laughs> there's Jackie. All right. Thank you so much, um, and we will, uh, we're, you'll be, uh, at the end of the service, uh, you'll be going to Lakeshore Lobby, and I want to say again to our junior kindergarten and, kind and senior kindergarten children here, thank you so much for being such incredible leaders, uh, sharing your beautiful voices here, sharing your wise voices through the story, um, thank you so much, and thanks to parents and grandparents, too. Wonderful to see all of you here this evening. Um, and with that, we turn to the bottom of page 586 for Alenu. Please rise. Alenu l'shabeach l'adon hakol L'atet gedula liot ser preshit Shelo asanu ke goye ha'aratzot Velo samanu ke mishpechot ha'adama Shelo sam chelkenu kahem Vegor aleinu ke chol ha'monam Va'anachnu koreim Umishtachavim umodim Lifnei melech malche hamlachim Akadosh Baruch Hu, v'nemar v'haya Adonai l'melech al kol ha'aretz b'yom ha'hu b'yom ha'hu yihe Adonai echad u'shemo u'shemo u'shemo. And in this season of light, we remember those whose lights lit up our own lives while they were walking this earth. And we now continue to light up when we think of them and grateful for all that they taught us in our lives. On this Shabbat, we are remembering those who recently passed from this earth. Ronald Spielman, Caroline Cassie Gantz, Anne Rabin, Ariana Elster. Marge Levine, April Ben Seeley, Howard Galper, Phoenix Schmidt, and Dr. Ernie Weiss. 
We also remember those whose yard site we mark on this Shabbat. Bruce Abrams, Rhoda Bear, Zola May Bailey, Saul Barsman, Henry Bannock, Maida Bildner, Dale Bina, Pearl Marie Burnett, Goldie Coven, Muriel Crasco, Annie Quaylar, Linnea Cutler, Sharon Deutsch, Phyllis Dorfman, Florence Elric, Molly Farscht, Lynette Fairman, Irving Flexgold, Joan Gaines, Leo Greenfield, Susan Greenstein, Bernard Harris, Jack Hoffman, Phyllis Kadish, Samuel Kaplan, Bruce Kaplan, Susan Carmel, Donald Carper, Chuck Kleinens, Leonard Levine, Sarah Berkowitz Marinson, Leona Merker, Janice Miller, Harriet Molstein, Blanche Randall, Samuel Reinstein, Dr. Morton Rosen, Minnie Ross, Rose Rubin, Stanley Safran, Morris David Schneider, Jack Schneider, Sydney Simmons, Charles Sterling, Maxine Vicker, Isidore Warty, and Carol Wolf. There are others whom you are remembering on this Shabbat. I invite you to say their name. Teddy Shikom is on page 598. Yit gadal v'yit kadash shemei rabba v'alma divra chirute v'yamlich malchute v'chayechon v'yomechon v'chayedechol v'et Yisrael v'agala v'izman kari v'imru ame yehe shemei rabba mevarach le'alam u'lalmei almaya Yit barach v'yishtabach v'yit ha'ar v'yit romam v'yit nase v'yit hadar v'yit ale v'yit halal sheme de kudusha b'richu le'ela min kol v'irchata v'shirata tush b'chata v'nechemata da'amran ve'alma v'imru amen yehesh lama rabba min shemaya v'chayim aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael v'imru amen. Ose shalom vimuma, who ya ase shalom. Aleno ve al kol Yisrael vimru amen. Ose shalom vimuma, who ya ase shalom aleno ve al kol Yisrael vimru. So, Cantor Katzman, we're going to go all the way back to the beginning of the service, not just to Lakado D, but even back further toward where we began. And I have to say to you, in all seriousness, I just don't know how difficult we understand it is when you have been someone who has known all kinds of melodies, who's brought them to this synagogue for over 30 years. Is this right? It's definitely over 30. <laughs> <laughs> and then you come back here tonight, and you're able then to just call back all these beautiful melodies, and then ones that have been introduced since then, and then to be able to, on this night, on a very short notice, come in and bless us with your presence. You have no idea what joy that gives us, and we're so grateful. Oh, it gives me at least as much joy, if not more. Mm. And all those old melodies, they're still my new ones. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't we invite these uh, kindergarten children, if they'd like to, yes. come back to the Bima. Um, and I'll tell you, there is a shortcut to get to the, uh, to the cupcakes from here. <laughs> so if any of the children and their parents, maybe even grandparents, want to join us on the Bima, and certainly these extraordinary teachers, please come up here too. And you can even bring a partner if you want to. Uh, 
And so we'll close on page 643, page 339 online. I mean, nothing better, right? <laughs> you ready? Hava, Hava Nashira, Shir Hallelujah, Shir with dance moves no less i loved those i want to learn them next time and for all of us shabbat shalom shabbat shalom, shabbat shalom.